dear ones, the topic, our theme is healing the Ummah. One of the first ailments, sicknesses that Allah Rabbul Izza chose to cure is the sickness of ignorance, jahl. That is why the first revelation is Iqra. So Allah Rabbul Izza emphasized the necessity for knowledge and knowledge is the cure of ignorance. So when the light of knowledge turns on, the darkness of ignorance fades. In ignorance, people do all sorts of stuff. Imagine you walk in a dark room or through a dark tunnel and in front of you there's a pit. You can't see the pit, you'll fall into it. In front of you there are sharp objects, you can't see it so you'll step on it. If there's a snake or scorpion, it will bite you, you can't see. What is your problem? There's no light. You're stuck in the darkness of ignorance. Today, there's a darkness of ignorance in an age of over-information. There's a darkness of ignorance which cloaks the eyes of the common man. You can't deny that. Anytime in 2024, with all the cameras in the world, a genocide is taking place and the common man doesn't know. You can't deny that he's cloaked in a veil of ignorance. So how do you get rid of this darkness of ignorance? The darkness of ignorance goes when the light of knowledge comes. So we don't need to do fancy stuff. We just need to educate people. You educate people with the truth of the situation because walillahi alhamd, walillahi alhamd, the truth is on our side. The truth is evidently on our side. Sky News and CNN and Fox News and all of them can do whatever they want. The truth is on our side. Um, there's a indigenous population that is being massacred, that is being displaced, that is being dispossessed of their land, that is be, uh, the truth is on our side. But it is being packaged, cloaked, covered in darkness. But if the common man sees the truth, public opinion shifts, nothing can stand in its way. Because the reality, the ultimate truth is, the average citizen of this country and of every country, the US and Australia and the UK, the average population, their hearts of good hearts. They're decent people. Uh, they just haven't been woken up. They just haven't been educated. The light hasn't been turned on because the media floods it. So me and you need to do two things. Number one, learn the facts. Dear ones, learn the facts. Reduce the emotions, increase the knowledge. Figure out what is happening there. I'll give you a, a couple of simple pointers. So the first one, historically, our Sheikh spoke about, uh, you know, the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, who was in the kingdom of, um, that the Sheikh mentioned, but you go back, so it's Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yeah? Ibrahim had a son called Ismail who ended up in Mecca. Another son called Ishaq. Ishaq stayed in Jerusalem. So Ishaq had a son called Yaqub. Yaqub, Jacob, is what is known as Israel. So when we say children of Israel, we do not mean children of Abraham. We do not mean children of Isaac. When we say children of Israel, we mean children of Yaqub, Jacob. Now, the children of Israel claim that land is theirs. So we say, where was Israel? So they say Israel was in Palestine. So okay, Israel had 12 sons. The most famous one was Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf ended up in Egypt in the land of the pharaohs. He grew to prominence there. He called his family over. Pretty soon, Israel, Yaqub, 
and all the children of Israel were in Egypt. And there they were for centuries. So Israel, the original, with his children, as in children of Israel, were in Egypt. So if they were in Egypt, who was in Palestine? And the answer is the indigenous Palestinian. They were there at that time. They continued throughout time and they're still there now. So it doesn't matter how you look at it. I'm just sharing one little point for you because time is short. This is not going to be a full, full on lecture. So number one, healing the Ummah, learn dear ones. Learn and when you learn, next step is learn to package the information in a consumable manner. A person can have really good things to say. Say it in a wrong way, he will make a friend into an enemy. By nature, the, your father loves you more than anyone. Competition between mom and dad, but halas, between those two, it will be one or the other. He loves you. So you call him dad or abba or baba or Hadrat or what? Love is good. Call him the man that sleeps with my mother. Love disappears. Because you the same relationship, you package the wrong. You understand what I'm saying? You mispackage a good thing, you turn an enemy, a friend into an enemy. Package it properly, you turn an enemy into a friend. So learn, package, share. Share with with if, don't be shy of sharing. So the first command that came was knowledge. Second command that came was to stand. Get up, pray. Because prayer gives you a compass. It gives you oomph. It gives you stamina. It gives you courage. And then when you've got that, the second qum came. قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ Get up and warn. Share the information. Share the guidance. So, when you are informed, package it right. Trust in Allah Rabbul Izza. And then share. Don't be afraid of sharing the truth. A little discomfort in the path of the truth, bear it. Bear it as a badge of honor. You lose your job for it. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْ Tell your children, Habibi, there was a genocide going on. Your father stood for the truth. Your father lost his job. The child will go up proud and confident. You lose your visa in a couple of countries, lose it. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. And last one, dear ones, Allah has blessed us with organizations such as these ones that can have access there, try to do some khair there. Do some khair. There's nothing else available to us. I, uh, for the last 10 months, this has been going on. I find that a betrayal of a forum and a platform in which I do not speak on this. Because they, they're giving their dear lives and I can't say a few words. And they're giving their dear lives. And I can't send a few dollars. What is left? So, Alhamdulillah, the brothers are able to collect. And there is serious need there. Um, so send. And, what, whoever, and no one has ever given to Allah. And lost in that game. Listen to me. Eh? No one has ever given to a business better than to Allah. Rabbul Azza. I'll end with the story, yeah? A true story. So there was a businessman, accumulated wealth, and had one son. And then he passed away. When he passed away, the young son took the wealth, and instead of doing business, he went into knowledge, studied deen. And he used to use the money, the wealth that dad had left, pay his expenses and lived like this for some time. Then the money ran out. Money ran out and children are 
hungry. So what to do? So he decided the only thing left is the house. So I'll go sell the house. So he went to find a real estate agent, quote unquote, in the olden days, you know. Um, met a friend of his, what are you doing? I want to sell this house. Why? Because I don't have money. Money is finished. I'm seeking knowledge and um, children are hungry. So this friend of his, righteous, there's so much to tell you, but anyway, time is short. Righteous man gave him, uh, a, you know, the, the breads in those days were bigger than, you know, Afghan breads, the longer ones, the bigger ones. So a few pieces of bread and with butter and honey on top of it. He goes, take this to your children and let me think of a solution for you. So he took this uh, bread with butter and honey on it. And on the way, he saw a mother, single mother, uh, destitute and difficulty with a little babe, young child with her. And the child looked at the food and her eyes locked at the food. So this man saw this as an opportunity that I have a need at home and genuine need. And at the same time, a person needs here and an opportunity for me to lend to Allah Rabbul Azza instead. So he gave the bread to the, to the child and went home. Saw the kids hungry. The situation drove him to the market again. Met the same friend. He goes, I have decided to sell the house. He goes, what do you mean? There's a whole caravan that has come to your house. Caravan like camel after camel. So he rushed back home and he sees food and wealth and coins and money. And, and he goes, who, he goes, are you this person? He said, yes. He goes, we are from Khorasan, from Afghanistan area. Your father did business with us so many years ago. And this is the prophets we have brought back to you. So no one has ever invested with Allah and lost. Habibi, invest. This is a business in which there is no loss. Allah bless you. Allah guide you. Allah guard you.